In football, there is an age-old theme of false prophets, those who seem to have a bright future in the game and be declared as the next Messi, the next Maradona, or the next Pele, only to fall off, leaving behind a legacy of unfulfilled potential. This could be caused by injuries, yes, but it is usually the result of other factors such as substance abuse, ill-discipline, self-sabotage, a poor work ethic, or illegal actions. Rubinho was a great example of this, having been declared as the next Pele. Despite his talents at youth level, his poor work ethic, inconsistency, lack of tactical knowledge, and disciplinary issues contributed to his downfall. Then you have players like Wayne Rooney and Neymar, who are some of the greatest players of their respective generations. I would say they are not exactly false prophets considering what they have achieved in the sport, but there is a feeling that had they avoided injuries and not suffered an early drop off, I believe that they were talented enough to be solidified as all time greats up there with Messi and Ronaldo. So you have an idea of what I mean. However, there was an Argentine player that was touted for greatness and was one of the best players in South America. His talent and accomplishments led many to claim that he was the next Maradona. However, he was extremely temperamental, having multiple bans and disputes throughout his career, and later struggled with alcoholism. He was widely criticized by many for having failed to live up to his enormous potential. I am talking about Ariel Ortega, a River Plate legend who destroyed the Argentina Primera Division and was one of the best players in the world, but could have been so much more. But before we begin, I am trying to hit 500 subscribers by June, and if you want to be a part of this small but mighty community, absolutely obliterate that like and subscribe button. Ariel Arnaldo Ortega was born on March 4th, 1974, in the town of La Desma, bordering Chile, Paraguay, and Bolivia. The son of a welder, he grew up in La Desma's grimy badlands. When he was 16, he attended a local football tournament organized by River Plate to unearth young talent. What they found was an absolute wizard. Reflecting on that trial, Ortega would say, There were 500 guys. I grabbed the ball and didn't give it to anybody. I played well and was told to come back. At the time, River Plate were perhaps enjoying the greatest period in their history. They had won their first Libertadores in 1986, as well as an intercontinental title. Daniel Passarella, one of Argentina's greatest ever captains, became their manager two years later. Almost immediately, Passarella saw something in Ortega. The scruffy kid was shy but there was that arrogance about him. The coach took an almost fatherly interest in his well-being. Only in later years when Ortega's future indiscretions caught up with his ability would he realize the extent of Passarella's influence. Admitting he was not just a technician, he cared a lot. He repaid Passarella's faith instantly, setting up the winner on his debut against Platense. In his debut campaign, he made 14 appearances in all competitions, often being used as a rotation option as River Plate won the 1991 Apertura title. However, it wasn't until the following season that he became a first team starter. In the next three seasons, his form would gradually increase. Los Milanarios would win back-to-back -back Apertura titles in the 1993 and 1994 seasons, being included in the 1994 South America Team of the Year and made it to the semifinals of the Copa Libertadores. However, stats don't tell the whole story because it was not solely the stats that made him one of, if not, the deadliest players in the league. Nicknamed El Burrito, or the Little Donkey, due to his stubbornness, in his prime during the mid-90s, Ortega was one of the most formidable attacking midfielders in the world. He was known for his incredible skill on the ball and was one of the most technically gifted players the Argentine game had ever seen. He was declared the king of dribbling due to his tremendous dribbling ability. His low center of gravity combined with his balance, touch, grace, and explosivity made him unpredictable. He was able to control the ball with such ease and was able to single-handedly drag River up the field. He was also able to walk past defenders, making him unplayable in his prime. 
even when teams would double up on him by sending two and three players to mark him. He would be able to absorb the pressure and would always find a way to wriggle free of them through his use of skill moves or a simple change of speed or direction. This gave his teammates space to make deadly runs into the box where Ortega would find them due to his endless creativity, his laser-like passing, and his incredible vision. His composure was also incredible, knowing when to shoot and always having ice in his veins. He had the unique ability to avoid any sliding challenge or attempt to block the ball, making defenders look completely stupid in the process. Combine that with his ability to effortlessly score or assist within the 18-yard box, and that made him deadly when in possession of the ball. As soon as he got the ball to feet, it was essentially game over. And of course, we cannot forget to talk about his signature move, the chip shot. Basically, Ortega had this unique ability to effortlessly lift the ball over the keeper, deceiving him and having it go into the back of the net. His skills and talents earned him comparisons with Maradona, and watching his highlights from his time at River Plate, there was certainly a touch of the Argentina legend in there. It was Ortega's good form that saw him called up for the 1994 World Cup. They had a good team with the likes of Batistuta, Simeone, and of course, El Diego. However, when it emerged that Maradona was caught doping, Argentina's talisman was sent home from the 1994 World Cup in disgrace, and their tournament was suddenly in jeopardy. A shy 20-year-old Ortega had been thrust in awkwardly into the spotlight, chosen to fill the most gargantuan of shoes in the next game against Romania. Predictably, Ariel Ortega's Argentina debut had failed to convince, and they had crashed out of the competition. Despite the 1994 World Cup setback, he would bounce back in tremendous fashion, scoring 10 goals in 45 games in the next season. However, the 95-96 season would be his absolute best, teaming up with the likes of returning club legend and three-time Copa America winner Enzo Francescoli, as well as young Hernan Crespo, to win the greatest trophy in South American football, scoring the winning goal in the quarterfinals to progress River to the semifinals, assisting in the final, and being included in the 1996 South America Team of the Year. He was a technical marvel, simply unplayable, and the heir to Maradona. So it was only a matter of time before Europe came calling. He was signed by Claudio Ranieri's Valencia for 10.2 million euros, becoming the most expensive player in Argentine football history. Despite scoring 7 goals in 1,067 minutes or 1 goal every 152 minutes for Los Che in his debut season, hardly bad numbers, he struggled in Spain. Valencia was described as a team of inconsistent technicians, with Ortega being chief among them and Ranieri was intent on adding discipline and structure. Ortega was deployed as an enganche, a combustible playmaker capable of both majesty and brilliance, as well as pure chaos, just like Maradona. His failure to follow instructions and his rebellious nature saw him quickly fall out with the Italian. Before long, he was on the bench and eventually banished from the squad. As far as the club's hierarchy were concerned, Ortega had already been deemed surplus to requirements. Despite his disappointing spell with Valencia, he was called up for the 1998 World Cup in France. Argentina was the favorite to win the tournament, with huge expectations being placed upon them. However, none would prove more influential than Ortega, who contributed to almost 80% of his side's goals. His best performance came against Jamaica in the group stage, where he scored two incredible goals in a 5-0 curb stomping of the reggae boys. When Argentina faced the Netherlands in the quarterfinals, the stage was set for Ortega to announce himself as one of the game's greatest. Instead, the world saw his appetite for self-destruction, which would become an all-too-common theme in his career. He had endured a difficult afternoon marked out of the game by the Dutch defense. Eventually, his frustrations boiled over and he threw himself at Yap Sam in the hope of getting a penalty. However, 
The ref didn't buy it, and nor did Edwin Van der Sar, so Ortega accepted defeat and continued with the match. No, I'm just kidding. He swiftly headbutted the Dutch goalkeeper to the chin. Ortega was dismissed and Argentina lost soon after, put to the sword by the magic of Dennis Bergkamp. A Valencia spokesperson sneered at a press conference. Ortega is like that. A headline in El País summed it up with brutal irony. Ortega was decisive in Argentina, useless in Valencia. Despite his violent outbursts, Sampdoria were keen on signing him. He was decent in Genoa, bagging 8 goals and 7 assists in 31 games and showed glimpses of his ability, including a deaf chip against Inter Milan. But he was the star man for a struggling Sampdoria side under Luciano Spalletti. David Platt was appointed halfway through the season and dropped Ortega from the starting lineup. He lasted just 6 games and Il Doria was relegated at the end of the season. In December 1998, he was arrested and breathalyzed for battling with fans outside a nightclub while intoxicated. This would become the first of many acts of self-sabotage and alcoholism that would mark the beginning of a downward spiral to which his career would never recover from.